Finally, the most important video on ozone therapy. I've been doing a video series. If you've seen any of my other videos on ozone, this is the most important one. This is what are the benefits of ozone? I don't care how it's created or I don't care how it's used, but finally, what are the benefits of it? And first, before I dive into it, uh, there's lots of research proving ozone. So if you have any questions, go to the research, but these are the, the kind of layman's version of the benefits. There's a lot more science to it. There's a lot more research to it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this video in terms of how a patient would, would want to know. And so some of it you're going to have to take with a grain of salt saying, okay, Dr. Rube knows what he's talking about. He's used this. He's looked up the research. He's, he's seen it. Um, so I won't go into all the biochemistry behind it, but we're going to go through the benefits of ozone. Now, most of these benefits are from the IV version of ozone. So you can certainly insufflate it in the ears, nose, and, and rectum and vagina, as we've talked about. You can inject it inside the joints, but this is primarily from the IV ozone uh, perspective. So this is going to be most likely the longest video, but um, let's jump into it. So one of the most important effects of ozone is one of the hormesis effects or hormetic effect. And basically the hormetic effect of ozone is say that it is a stress that creates a secondary benefit. So that's one of the things that's misunderstood about ozone is that ozone is technically a stressor given to the body. And when you stress the body, it then creates an antioxidant reaction to that stress. And so what you're actually giving someone when you give them ozone is a, is a signal, a, a chemical mediator that says, hey, by the way, this might happen, so you need to prepare for it in the future but then it never happens. So then as the body is reacting to this, this thing that might come, it makes all kinds of antioxidants and other things that have benefits all around the body. So primarily when we're giving people ozone, we're actually giving them a message to their system on um, to be prepared for the future. So the way to say that is one, ozone creates ROSs, which are reactive oxygen species. And if you do any reading, reactive oxygen species are technically bad. So why would we give someone reactive oxygen species? And that's because there's an instant therapeutic shock. When we give someone IV ozone, we draw a significant amount of blood out, we mix it with ozone, the gas, and then the blood absorbs the ozone, and then we give the blood back to the patient. Now, we're not really giving um, a, a, a ozone as the toxic gas. The, the blood is absorbing it. When the blood absorbs, it's an, it's an instantaneous effect that says, hey, all these reactive oxygen species were created, and then the blood actually has signaling inside of the bloodstream to say, create this therapeutic shock, create these antioxidant benefits in order to do other things because we, we sensed ozone was here, and so we need to be prepared for when it shows up again. No different than a natural disaster happening and then a city or town preparing for that natural disaster to potentially happen again. The other thing it does is it creates lipid peroxides. Once again, a bad thing. I talk about lipid peroxides. We can test for them in the urine. Lipid peroxides are bad. But remember, this is an instantaneous amount uh, or an instantaneous event that happens microscopically. It's not enough to damage the body. It's enough to scare the body, but not damage the body. After you create those lipid peroxides, you actually get a late and long-lasting signal that after you give the, the blood back to the patient, that it creates a long-lasting effect of, hey, ozone is around. You need to build antioxidants so this doesn't damage us in the future. All we're giving someone is the message or, or, or stimulus to the body. I like to compare it to cryotherapy. A lot of people know about cryotherapy or I've done cryotherapy. The idea behind cryotherapy is you go freeze your butt off in this nitrant, um, uh, nitro, oh, why am I blanking on that? Um, the frozen nitrogen, um, and liquid nitrogen, there it is. Uh, they give you liquid nitrogen in this chamber and you freeze for about two and a half to three minutes and then you get out and you're perfectly fine. It's not enough to damage. No one gets frostbite in the cryo chamber in three minutes. No one gets damaged by the freezing cold. But the idea is if you freeze for three minutes, your body builds all kinds of protective mechanisms around that freezing that's beneficial to the body. You don't have to freeze 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to get the stimulus. That's what they've studied. That's what they figured out. This is the same idea behind ozone, just different. It's not cold therapy, it's ozone. So there are several categories of, of benefits with ozone. So one of the first ones I want to talk about is the repair benefits. Once again, we're not going to go into the detailed biochemistry. If you want to nerd out, you can go and research it. But basically, it stimulates platelets to release growth factors. Many people think platelets are just the thing that clots the blood. After you cut yourself, platelets show up and clot the blood so that you stop bleeding out. And yes, that is important. But after the blood is clotted, how do you get more blood and, and nutrients to the area to fix the problem? If, if we just completely clotted and cut off blood circulation to a damaged area, you'd, ever, you'd never actually be able to heal it. So not only do the platelets coagulate and stick together and, and stop the blood flow, they actually call for repair and healing. So by giving ozone to the whole blood, remember there's platelets in the blood, um, it stimulates them to release these growth factors. These growth factors then go all around your body, stimulate healing and regeneration everywhere. It recruits stem cells. Now, growth factors are the things that recruit stem cells, so that would make sense. 
Next is it actually dilates the blood vessels. So vasodilator, also known as um, like blood pressure drugs, dilate the vessels so that you have less pressure. Um, it improves blood vessel size over time. So people that have squirrely veins or difficult to, con uh, difficult to, to stick veins for blood draws and, and IVs, it can actually improve blood vessel circulation. It reduces pain receptors or how the pain receptors react to pain. It also reduces blood clotting. Now, kind of, it seems backwards that you would stimulate platelets and reduce blood clotting, but that's one of the ways ozone works. The other one that's kind of my favorite one is the, the ozone has detox benefits. So it itself stimulates glutathione production. If you've seen any of my IV videos, if not, you need to go watch them to learn all about glutathione. Glutathione is one of our most, it is our most important antioxidant, our most pot, uh, potent detoxifying agent. It's basically the magnet that likes to stick to toxins and then the, the, that makes them water soluble so the kidneys can easily urinate them out. So ozone, once again, is an oxidant stress that triggers the body to generate more glutathione to protect itself from future ozone treatments, um, which are only gonna happen on a therapeutic need. And so getting ozone actually stimulates the production of glutathione. It's not enough to burn up your glutathione, but it's enough to generate more. It also helps break down chemicals and toxins. One thing that's neat about ozone that I've learned over time is that ozone can break down plastics. So it can break down your, your gloves on your hand. So if a nurse takes a, a, a syringe of ozone, high enough dose, and squirts it into their uh, glove, the glove will actually disintegrate from the ozone. That's one of the reasons, if you saw my previous videos, that's one of the industrial uses of ozone, is it's used to clean up things. It's used to kill bacteria. It's used to kill fungus. It's used to break down toxins, plastics included. But that's also one of the reasons why you can't really use it in certain things. Um, like you don't want to use high dose ozone around your computer equipment or air conditioning equipment because it'll burn up the rubber, it'll burn up the, the plastic, and then it'll just have holes in it, right? The other benefits are, of course, energy benefits. And by energy, I mean the actual production of energy at the cellular level. So it stimulates the mitochondria, which increases their cellular efficiency. There's a lot more data on that, and some of it is, is mystical as to why it does it. But basically, ozone gives you more energy. It helps with fatigue. One of the other things that's really popular right now in the infusion world is NAD+. NAD+, infusions help stimulate brain function. They help um, give people more energy. They can reverse uh, nerve damage. Just incredible stuff in NAD+. If you notice, ozone is proven to convert NADH, which you already have, you already make, it converts NADH to NAD+, so it can be used and regenerated again. That's one of the ways it increases the cellular efficiency or mitochondrial function. So just like NAD+, infusions, you can do ozone infusions to generate your own NAD+. And if you've ever had an NAD+, infusion, they actually have significant side effects, and it's part of the, the rodeo with it. Um, ozone does not have as many side effects. It's much better tolerated. Ozone has immune benefits. And this part is, once again, a little mystical. It seems a little uh, interesting to me, but the research proves it, so we're gonna talk about it. Ozone, uh, IV ozone, inhibits inflammation. It not only inhibits inflammation, it actually stimulates the anti-inflammatory pathways. So not only are you are turning off inflammation, you're also turning on the ability to decrease inflammation further. So it's wonderful. It helps kill and eradicate living organisms. So it seems completely wild to me to believe that you would have living organisms in your bloodstream from a conventional medical standpoint. Um, if you asked a conventional medical doctor, they would say that's entirely not true, but it is actually research proven and we know that living organisms can transmit through the bloodstream. For instance, if you have syphilis, you can get spirochetes in your brain. Lyme disease is a spirochete disease, so it makes sense that also Lyme could be in your brain. These are living organisms that are traveling in your bloodstream to get to your brain. Research has also shown that in Alzheimer's patients, they found mold in Alzheimer's brains. So is it that wild to think that you would breathe in mold, mold would travel in your bloodstream and then land in your brain? Yes, ozone can treat that. Another one is that they frequently find um, microscopic bacteria in people's joints. So if you harvest someone's joint fluid who, have, who has arthritis, you'll frequently find, it's hard to find enough to be an infection, but you can find PCR evidence that there was DNA of bacteria and fungi inside that joint. So although it seems weird to have bacteria floating in your bloodstream, you absolutely can. Every time you brush your teeth, you get a microscopic amount of, of bacteria in your mouth or in your bloodstream, so we know it's possible. Doing IV ozone actually eradicates those. Now, one of the cool things about eradicating the, 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 the bacteria and things in your bloodstream is that we're not taking out all your blood, so we're not just cleaning your whole bloodstream, but the idea is if you can kill a small percentage of it, then it breaks these things down into smaller molecular pieces, and these small molecular pieces can be used to be given to your immune system. So your immune system says, hey, I found this dead thing around here, and it's floating in the bloodstream. You need to be reactive to that, and you need to go find it and hunt it down. 
So that's one of the ways it helps balance the immune system. It also has further um, abilities to basically decrease white blood cells that are overly active by killing them off. They absorb more ozone, they're more reactive to it, and it, it, it actually stimulates the, the, the white blood cells that are not overreactive. So someone who's in an autoimmune flare or um, has a rogue immune system, ozone can actually tamper down the rogue part of the immune system, the bad part, and actually elevate the good part and that's, uh, that's why we put balancing the immune system. So there's a myriad of benefits of, of IV ozone. Those are the real quick ones, like I said, a little bit longer of a video. There's research in all of this if you wanna go and look it up. I'm not gonna go into that in this video. The next video I'm gonna go over is what is the difference between 10 pass and high dose? Uh, if you've ever done any ozone therapy or talked to anybody about ozone IV, then you've definitely heard the word 10 pass, so we're gonna go into that next.